Hi, this is Dr. Topper, Global Pharmacreasons Director for Oracle Health Science Consulting. This is our last video. We've already discussed about standardization, consistency, rationale, and in this video, having to do with how to survive or how to mitigate the risk in an audit or inspection for Pharma Commission's operations. In this video, we'll be talking about procedure. Now, procedure is commonly known as SOPs, our standard operating procedures. And believe it or not, it still shows up as an inspectorate finding in about 20% of the cases. So what is really going on? Now we have already instituted across our departments a way to catalog our SOPs, our standard operating procedures, a way to catalog our review states, usually on a two-year review cycle, a way to catalog our signatures, electronic signature or a database or a hard copy signature that's scanned up into a documentum or an otherwise repository, a way to log when an SOP is taken out for review, and that is either through a system, such as QMAS, TrackWise, et cetera, through a, a, a validated uh, housing system, usually um, controlled by quality affairs or training group. So then why does this still show up as a finding in inspections? if we have so many controls around it? Well, one of the things is that our processes are dynamic. They're not static. So if we build a process on case workflow, it's very conceivable that in the two years that that process is alive in that static document, we have tweaked it in some sorts. Perhaps the handoff is different. Perhaps the user group has changed. Perhaps we've named uh, an entity that will then have a participatory role in that case management process. But we've, what we've failed to do, because we think that in a two year cycle, we'll address it on the next review, what we've failed to do is actually make this a living document. So the example is that the inspector walks in, in year one of your two year review cycle, you've markedly changed the uh, process, yet you haven't written it down anywhere. They're reading an old procedure and then they're seeing a brand new procedure carried out. And that is simply not consistent. And so you may get a finding. The way to mitigate this is to have notations. And you can certainly have addendums, you can have notes, and you can simply just state in a note to file that we have changed the procedure in such a way and we will address these in the next review cycle and insert them into our SOP. If you find that what you've changed is detrimental enough and has a rippling effect across other procedures, then certainly you can ask your quality affairs group to take it out of a two-year review cycle as an exception and address those changes right then and there to be in the completely safe side. But often it's not necessary to do so. You simply have to show due diligence in keeping up with your procedures. Because even the inspectorates know that the procedures are rarely looked at except when the review cycles come up. So they will look for whether you have changed something. And small editorial changes, names of entities, if you're not called pharmacovigilance operations anymore, you've added drug safety and pharmacovigilance to your title, those things are nominal. Those things do not have any bearing. We are talking about actual procedural changes. So in this series, we have talked about how to mitigate certain areas when dealing with a audit or safety inspection, namely standardization, consistency, rationale, and procedure. I hope you've enjoyed these mini series. In the next part series, we'll talk about the case management workflow and any automations and uh, artificial intelligence that can help us create efficiencies. This is Dr. Topper for Oracle Health Science Consulting. Thank you for joining me.